Hello my lovely Trails fans and welcome back to our next episode of Trails in the Sky. Alrighty, so like I said, today's episode is going to be investigating the orphanage. So we're going to head straight over there right now. I think there may also be a little detour that we can take for an additional scene as well. I'll go ahead and get us all the way over to, there, to that detail spot. Just heading to the Genis Royal Academy, like we did last time. And when we get to the gate, we can see what the conversation was about. Almost there. Hey, isn't this... This is Chloe's school, I believe. We have to hurry back to, inve to investigate the orphanage, though. Yep, so just a tiny little scene, but I'll go ahead now and cut the video until I get to the orphanage. Alrighty, and we're just outside of the orphanage, so we're going to head in now. Oh, wow. This is terrible. It's just gone. Well, who do we have here? Are you here from the Bracer Guild? Y yeah. You're all from Minoria, right? Yeah, we came to help pick up the pieces. We were here last night around midnight trying to fight the fire. As you can see, it could have gone better. So then, what about Matron, Teresa and the kids? They're all fine, don't worry. Right now, they're sleeping at Minoria's Inn. Given the size of the fire, it's a miracle that no one was badly hurt. Thank goodness. Yes, at least that's something. We're here now to clean up what we can. How about you two? We really ought to check up on everyone at the inn. Sorry, but that'll have to wait. Huh? Now that we're here at the scene of the crime, there's a lot that strikes me as weird. We need to find what clues we can before the trail goes cold, so to speak. I know how you feel, but this has to take precedence right now. Right, we're braces after all. We have to find out what happened. Right, so let's see what we can find. Looks like you'll have your hands full. Good luck. Since the fire's burned so much, I guess the only thing to do is to rebuild. Don't know what Matron Teresa is going to do. I mean, it's going to be really expensive. Man, I was in shock yesterday. I mean, seeing the sky go all red in the east over Minoria? I tried to get here as quickly as I could, but everything was already gone. The barrels with food in them have been scorched black. So at this point, you just gotta pretty much look at everything. The herbs have been uprooted and strewn about the garden. Firewood for the stove has been scattered around. The milk tank has fallen on its side and is empty. The stump seats around the table have been scattered about. The door's been completely wrecked. Uh, it's all pitch black. Huh? What's wrong? Maybe this is just me, but does the hinge there look weird to you like it's been torn off or something? It does actually, as if it happened before the fire started. Once was a wall is now rubble. Wow, this place is ruined. Hey, do you smell something strange? Yes, and I think I know why. Sounds like something fishy is going on. Maybe they can get stuff at a discount. I owe them a little too. Now'd be the perfect time to pay them back. By the way, why is everything all scattered around like this? It was dark when I got here yesterday, so I'm not sure. But even the herb garden is all torn up. 
think there's probably one more clue I need to find. Just trying to figure out where it is. The salt from the flower bed is all over the ground. Fires burn so much, I guess the only thing to do is to rebuild. I don't know what Matron Teresa is going to do. I mean, it's going to be really expensive. Alright, we've taken a good look around. What do you think? I'm not sure, to be honest. First off, the fire doesn't appear to have started in the building. It most likely started outside. Outside? Over here. It looks like this area is the point of origin. Ah, where the wall collapsed. But how can you tell? Because the fire damage is worse here than anywhere else. Compare it to the areas nearby and you'll see. Oh, you're right. So it started here and then spread. You know what that means. Uh, well... Someone set the fire on purpose is the correct option here if you want the extra beefy. My thoughts exactly. That smell everywhere? It's some highly flammable oil. It's everywhere around here, so this has to be the fire's point of origin. No way. Plus, don't you think it's weird how everything outside is scattered around? Even the people fighting the fire wouldn't have done that to the herb garden. It's not a coincidence. Someone did this. Is that true? Chloe! I didn't know you were here. But why? Why would anyone do this? I have so many irreplaceable memories of this place. Why? How? How could someone do anything so cruel? Chloe. I'm sorry. I'm just so confused. I... I... You're not alone in that feeling. I barely know the place and this bothers the heck out of me too. It's hard to believe that anyone could be capable of something this awful. Estelle, but the matron and the kids are all okay, so we can be thankful for that, right? Thank you, that does help. I just started morning classes when the dean came to see me. He said that he'd heard that the orphanage was in flames. While I was on my way here, all I could think about was, they're fine, they're alive, Adios was watching over them. Well, we, he we heard that they're all at the inn in Menoria. Safe and sound. We just finished up here, so we're planning to go see them. Do you want to come with us? Y yes, I would like that very much. Alright then, to Minoria we go. Alrighty, so Minoria is our next stop, and there's going to be some new NPC dialogue when we get there, so I'm going to cut out the video. Actually, no need to do that. I forgot how uh, <laughs> how soon we would actually get there. So, uh, yep, here we are. So let's go ahead and catch up with everybody, see how everyone's getting on. The village certainly seems busy. Did something happen? You haven't heard about the massive fire just down the road? I heard there was a fire at the orphanage. I saw all of the kids go by crying. I feel bad for them. Uh, the last place we'll go is the second floor of the inn, because that will advance the story and we want to speak to everybody else first. I don't believe the guy at the lighthouse has any new dialogue, um, so you can safely ignore that guy. Last night I saw the eastern sky turn red and the stars were hidden from view by the rising smoke. I sent young men from the village to combat the blaze, but alas, we couldn't save the orphanage. 
At least there is some small comfort to be found in the fact that no one was hurt. I ah, know that's terrible. I mean, they, they basically tried to kill everyone there. Everyone from the orphanage came over. They were all upset about something, though. I wonder what happened. Zack tore out of here last night when he found out about the fire. I suppose he's still trying to help out over there. He really is a very dependable person. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure he's a little sweet on the uh, the matron there as well. I heard the kids crying upstairs. What in the world happened? Hmm, something unusual is going on. Was everything destroyed in the fire at the orphanage? I went ahead and let the kids use my room. If you wouldn't mind, could you go and try to cheer them up a little? Oh, that's a Royal Academy uniform. Is your name Chloe by any chance? Yes, why do you ask? The children from the orphanage talk about you a great deal. They're all upstairs in the big room. You should go and see them whenever you get the chance. Oh, I will. Pardon me. Matron, everyone! Miss Chloe, you came! Is anyone hurt? We're okay. <laughs> I is okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Is that Estelle and Joshua I see with you? Yes, since someone contacted the guild, we're investigating the incident and thought we'd stop by. I see. Thank you for taking the time. Investigating? You mean about the fire, right? Do you know who did it? Um... Well, how to put it? Estelle and Joshua exchanged awkward glances. So, um, who's hungry? I missed breakfast, so I was thinking about getting some food. Good boys and girls who join me will get some sweet treats. Really? I want some pudding. But, but... Come on, Clem. Huh? Quick griping and come on. Let's go downstairs, Miss Chloe. <laughs> okay. Phew, that was close. I really wouldn't want the little kids to hear about this. Indeed. Although I get the feeling that Mary understands at least some of what's happening. <laughs> yes, isn't she great? I'm happy to have her around. Now, you were saying? Please tell me what you can. Thanks for your understanding. Okay then. First we checked out where the fire started, and it does appear that it was set deliberately. My suspicions were correct then. I've always been very careful about fire, so I suspected it might be something like that. Do you have any idea who could have done this? Whoever was responsible must have had some kind of motivation. I have no idea. We have no real money to speak of, nor has anyone ever borne a grudge against us. So it wasn't a robbery, and it wasn't for revenge. We have to acknowledge the possibility that someone did it just for fun. Did you happen to notice anything unusual leading up to or during the incident? Any strange people hanging around the orphanage, for instance? Yes, actually. Not during the daytime when you were there, but afterward. Though I can't imagine he would do something like this. Who's he? While we were trying to escape from the burning building, the beams fell in and blocked our way through the entry hall, but then he showed up and helped us all get free. We owe him our lives. R really? Was he Minorian? Right after he helped us, he called the villagers over and left in the confusion. I asked the other villagers about him, but no one seemed to know anything. Sounds suspicious. What business would anyone have around the orphanage at such a late hour? Did you notice anything in particular about him? He was a man, maybe in his late twenties. He also had a brilliant silver hair. Silver hair? He had a troubled look about him, though, that made him seem far older than he looked. But he didn't strike me as a bad man. He sounds suspicious, but he did help you out. Doesn't sound like our guy to me. Joshua? What's with the goofy stir? 
Oh, it's nothing. Perhaps he was just a bracer who happened to pass by. I think that we should disregard him as a suspect. Um, okay. Pardon me? Oh, hi Chloe. Where are the children? <laughs> They're downstairs having some dessert. Matron Teresa, you have a guest. Huh? Pardon my intrusion. Oh! Mayor Dalmore. Oh, so the braces I met yesterday are here as well. Jean's reputation for responding quickly is well earned. Now then. It's good to see you again, Matron Teresa. After I heard what happened, I came over as quickly as I could. I'm glad that you're safe. Thank you, Mayor. It's very kind of you to come by. I know you're a very busy man. Nonsense. It is my responsibility to look after all areas of the region. More to the point, those who did this must not be allowed to get away with it. Joseph always loved that place. Such an atrocity. Allow me to express my most heartfelt condolences. Thank you. But I am sure that he would just be relieved that the children are alive and well. My sole regret is that all my mementos of him were lost to the fire. Matron Teresa. Tell me, Braces, have you any thoughts on who might have done this? We've only just begun our investigation, so it's too early to say, sir. It does look like it might have been done simply out of malice, however. I see. What a terrible thought. For something so heinous to happen in such a peaceful place. Pardon me, Mayor. Hm? What is it? Do you think that those people might have had a hand in this? Whoa, hold up. Who do you mean by those people? You encountered them yesterday. The ruffians down in the warehouse district of Ruon. Oh, them. Pardon my bluntness, but what makes you suspect them? They've been openly defying the mayor for quite some time now. They certainly seem to get their kicks out of causing trouble for him. And since he and Matron Teresa are friends, it... Gilbert. S sir Wild speculation does no one any good. This is a dire offence. We must have no false accusations. M my apologies, sir. That was foolish of me. I think it would be best to let the braces identify and locate the ones responsible. Can I count on your help? Sure. Leave it to us. We will devote our full attention to it, sir. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. By the way, Matron Teresa, I do have one question to ask. What is it? What do you plan to do with the orphanage now? Rebuilding will take time, and a not inconsiderable amount of mirror to complete. Honestly, I'm at a loss. We have a modest reserve of mirror, but the cost will be phenomenal. Matron. I was afraid of that. Well, I have a proposal of sorts for you. What might that be? At the Dalmore Estate in Gransall, I have a villa. It's only used for special occasions, so... What say you to having the children stay there for a little while? Oh. And of course, charging rent would be particularly boorish of me. You'd be welcome to stay there for as long as the rebuilding process takes. But, but there's no need for you to shoulder the burden on our troubles. But the villa sits unused. If you have misgivings, then I will grant you control of the grounds. Think of it as a well-deserved reward, if you will. May I? May I have some time to think it over? Your offer is most generous, but I can barely process it with everything going on. Perfectly understandable. You should get some rest. I must be off as well. If you decide to accept, please feel free to contact me. I will. Thank you very much. Let us go, Gilbert. Yes, sir. Wow, that was a shock. He's certainly the generous type on par with Mayor Maybell. Indeed, particularly in light of his being a former noble. What do you intend to do in regards to the Mayor's offer, Matron? Well, what do you think of the situation? Conventional wisdom dictates that you should accept it. However, once you've gone to Gransall... Oh, never mind me. <laughs> You're always such a thoughtful child. It's alright, I want you to give me your honest opinion. The herb garden and the people I care about would be gone. So, and... 
With you and Joseph gone, I feel like all of my good memories will fade, fade away. I'm sorry, I'm just being stupid and selfish. <laughs> I share your feelings. The orphanage is home to my memories of him, as well as the children's memories. But, though memories are precious, having a place to live is of the utmost importance. Yes, ma'am. I believe this will all be settled soon. Please, try to focus on tending to the campus festival for now. The children are really looking forward to it. Yes, ma'am. Estelle and Joshua, I wish I could be of more help, but I must leave the investigation in your hands. We will handle it, ma'am. We're going to take the culprit down, you can count on it. It sure has turned into a royal mess. Where should we start the search? Hmm. Maybe we should go to the guild and report back to Jean. We can figure out a plan of attack then. Sounds good to me. Something wrong? You look like something's bugging you. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind is just all over the place right now. I know how you feel. By the way, Joseph was Matron Teresa's husband, right? Yes. He died several years ago. But he meant a great deal to me as well. I see. Wait, does that mean you're from the orphanage too? No, nothing like that. He just did a huge favour for me a long time ago. We grew close again when I came to Rouen to attend the academy. Oh, I see. So in other words, every time you came by to play, you ended up helping out, like part of the family? Yes. He was like a father to me, but the shock I experienced was nothing compared to that of the matron and the other children. But we managed somehow. Miss Chloe! Mary, what's gotten you into such a hurry? Listen, Clem's gone. Huh? Y you don't mean he's left Menoria? Can you give us some more details? Okay. After the old man showed up, Clem went upstairs. In a couple of minutes, he came back down all red in the face, saying, They're not getting away with this. Then he just ran off. I wonder who he meant. You don't suppose it's... The gang at the warehouse would be the correct option here? Yes, I believe it was the Ravens. You probably overheard what the steward said. Oh no. I hope he's not planning to go and find them himself. It, it can't be. I can't allow this. I have to find him at once. We'll come with you. If we hurry, we might be able to catch him before he gets to Ruan. Miss Chloe. Don't you worry, I'll bring him back safely. You just look after the other children, alright? Okay, good luck. Let's head back to Ruan. Alright. Alright, let's do a quick check to see if there's any new dialogue. I think Clem just ran out of here. I wonder what could be the matter. Is it true that someone set fire to the orphanage? There are some real low lives in this world. By the looks of the weather, we should be able to take on the Crone Mountain soon. Our wait has paid off. saw a boy from the orphanage go running by a little while ago. I wonder what happened. Mary told me what happened. This is terrible, what an awful thing for him to overhear. I beg of you, please, find Clem and bring him back safely. What got Clem all worked up? Please find Clem. Clem didn't say anything since when we were eating pudding. Alrighty, couple more people to talk to. Rex offered them a room at the White Magnolia, which was of great help. In times of need, we must pull together. We will do whatever we can to help Matron Teresa and the orphans. Right, those two guys haven't returned yet. Isn't there a little girl around here? Don't see her now. The fire at the orphanage was arson? That's terrible, how could someone do such a thing? I have to go and help out at Carla's later. Yeah, where'd that little girl go? She seems to have just disappeared. Playing around here. Is 
that little boy from the orphanage was running like his life depended on it. I wonder what happened, it's a little worrisome. It must have taken a truly heartless individual to set fire to an orphanage. It's just not the kind of thing any human should be capable of. Whoever did it must be brought to justice. Oh, well, there's the little girl. I think Clem ran, ran outside in a big hurry. I wonder if he did something bad and got Matron Teresa mad at him again. Alrighty, another little detour, which would be back to the orphanage to speak to those two guys again. I finished doing some cleanup around here. All I can do now is wait to see what you find out. Phew, maybe I should take a breather. I'd like to at least find some of the kids' things to bring back to them. Alrighty then, I, I guess this is probably a good place to uh, call our episode for tonight, folks. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you know when the next episode comes out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.